I honestly hope in this devotional you don't misunderstand me, but if you don't have something nice to say, shut up. <laughs> I mean, come on. Jesus himself said when there were so many people around doing so many other works besides him, and here he is, the Son of God, the Son of Man, taking his disciples and moving about the country and preaching the kingdom of God and teaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, healing the sick, raising the dead. And the disciples came to him and said, look, hey, there's John's disciples, man. They're over there baptizing. He says, don't forbid them because your Father has given them to do that which they are called to do. Likewise, Jesus told his disciples when they were arguing and debating about some of the other disciples also, he said, he who is not against me is for me. Let's get real, folks. You are not called to go out there and start slashing and gashing and smashing and dashing the hopes, the lives, the dreams, and all the realities of people who are trying to find Jesus. Shut up. Please. <sighs> The one thing that drives me crazy is, what good are you? If you're not good, if you don't have fruit in your life, if you're not positive, if you're not at least moving in a direction where you're teaching faith, grace, mercy, love, kindness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, those things which God puts in our lives, shut up. <laughs> Go somewhere else. Go do something else. If you're really full of bitterness and you really have that much wrath that you have to go out and start attacking all these different ministries, shut up. Nobody wants to hear it. Most of us, maybe not all, but at least 90% of Christianity already knows who's kind of like out there, you know, out to lunch, and who's kind of like, you know, eating breakfast, and who's eating dinner, and who's just banqueting and sitting there at the banqueting table enjoying the goodness of God. Come on! Isn't it time that we grew up and put aside the sandbox with our toys? Quit playing as though we're the Holy Spirit, and we have to, oh, warn so many other people. Look, you can warn people if you have some huge ministry and you're already positive in what God has called you to do, and you mention something, well, you know, we don't go that direction, then praise the Lord, go ahead. But you see, there's a big, beautiful body of Christ out there with believers in it that are coming from every walk, tribe, tongue, nation, background, feelings, experience, all varieties of people, and they're all learning at different times, places, motivations, thoughts, intentions, directions, and only God by His Holy Spirit can see the heart. Man looks on the outward things. God looks on the heart. So, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, are you looking to, like, step up on top of somebody? Like, you want to stomp on them so that you feel like you're a little higher up? Please, you're not called to do that. You're called to seek Jesus. Jesus doesn't send you out as a prophet. He doesn't send you out as a... a man to chastise the body of Christ. He sends you out to disciple people, to teach them, to encourage them. Grace for grace, mercy for mercy, love for love. Not to go out and start stomping people and casting some out. Oh, you can't be a part of the body of Christ. Oh, you can't go do this. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, you can't say this. Oh, you can't say that. Oh, please. The first time a baby is born, you don't suddenly tell the little child, oh, I'm sorry, you can't baby talk. You have to speak in Hebrew. Or, no, I'm sorry, you can't baby talk. You have to speak in English. Oh, no, God forbid. You can't speak in English. You have to speak in Greek or Aramaic or Chinese or Vietnamese or some other language. Oh, please, get a grip. That 90% of people that know the body of believers that are out there in Christianity already have heard your rantings and ravings and lunatic statements about how this is wrong and that is wrong and this is wrong and that is wrong. If you've got something to say about Jesus, everyone is interested. If you lift him up, then all men would be drawn to him. God hasn't called you to fix the body. As a matter of fact, he said the wheat will grow up with the tares. He said they're both going to grow up. They're going to equally grow. Do you get a picture here? It's going to grow. You don't have to tell us who the tares is or the wheat is, because you don't know either. 
You only think you know because you've gotten this idea that, oh, I'm called of God to point out the faults of others. Do you know what fault finding is? Do me a favor. If you have an accusation, first of all, look up the word accusation in the Bible. Just do a word study before you even begin to accuse someone. Accusation, there's only one person who's an accuser of the brethren, and that's Satan. So even Jesus, when Peter was, you know, mouthing off and saying the wrong thing, Jesus looks at him and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Pardon me, but if you're accusing the brethren, I don't care who they are, whether they be Rick Warren, Greg Laurie, Billy Graham, even people that I would say, you might have a good handle on accusing them of some things. Benny Hinn, Joel Osteen, and some of the TBN stuff, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some things that I question, you know, I say, well, you know, uh, I think it's wrong, but you know what? If that's what God's doing with them, then just stay far away from me. But the point is, you don't have the right to accuse. Look it up in the Bible, please. Don't believe me. I beg you, don't believe me. Just do before you do anything else. Take God with you and let the Holy Spirit show you where do you get the authority to accuse the brethren? Where? When you find it, let me know and send me an email. I don't care. MrNetBusiness at gmail.com. You can send me emails all day long. Believe me, I'll respond. But at the same time, recognize that God might be wanting to take you out of the cesspool that you've made for yourself, that you're just kind of stirring up all this. Do you know what a cesspool is? That's a toilet. It's where a toilet dumps everything into and it just kind of skews around before it's absorbed into the ground and it stinks forever. And that's all it is, is that whenever you're accusing the brethren, you're stinking. It's stinking thinking. You're just getting all these ideas in your head that you got to kind of stir it all up and you want to throw all this cesspool water on everyone else and then they begin to stink too because they're participating and trying to tell you that, you know what, something about your theology stinks. Living water is what Jesus gave us. It's supposed to come out of us. It's supposed to bless people, causing them to grow, to seek the Lord, to find Him, to know Him in a personal, intimate way. Not to go around knocking people that are just learning on their own. Please, when's the last time that you went over and accused a baby? I heard you babble. I'm sorry. You're pos demon possessed because you're only a baby. You were just born and you're just saying da da. But that's demonic. Oh, give me a break. Go away. Get a grip with God, and then you can get a grip on the reality of the scriptures. And then when God leads you into the accuser of the brethren, figure out, are you one of them? Now, there's another scripture, which is interesting, because the children of Israel were famous for doing the same things that is in Christianity today. There was the wagging of the tongue. <sighs> there is nothing but wagging of the tongue going on constantly in Christianity. We have people telling people about this or that or the other thing. Oh, did you read this latest book? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, did you see this latest thing? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, did you see this latest video? Oh, no, 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 no. Quit passing it on. He that covereth the sin redeemeth a friend. There's a love covers a multitude of sins. Try not passing on the negative stuff. Try passing on the positive. Reinforce the good and you'll see that God will bless you. When you're just constantly wagging the tongue, then God's going to confront you likewise and tell you, look, you're wagging your tongue. Start there and read what the Bible has to say about wagging the tongue. If you don't have that in your Bible and it's kind of like you know a newer version, well, I don't know what to tell you. Get a King James for a minute just to look up that terminology and look for wagging the tongue. That is wrong. It's evil. It tears people down. It destroys the image that a person wants to believe in when they see that God is inspiring someone to do something great. It's the tearing down of heroes. It's the looking at faults. It's fault finding. It's gossiping. It's slander. It's all those things that are evil in the nature that we are of our flesh. Why be a tongue wagger? Stop it. Shut up. Don't do it. Run away. Quit. Hide. Delete it. Don't pass it on. Don't do all these things that people always like to say, oh, well, you know, let's pass on this whole idea that uh, I heard it said that this person was participating with this, so they must be like this. Those are called fallacies. Just because a person is in America doesn't mean everybody believes in, in uh, democracy, well, Democrats. Let's put it this way. If you're in America, are you a Democrat? Yes. 
If you're in America, are you a Republican? Yes. If you're in America, are you an independent? Yes. If you're American, are you a fundamentalist? Yes. If you're American, are you a Christian? Yes. If you're American, are you a Muslim? Yes. If you're in America, are you atheist? Yes. All those things are true about being in America. That doesn't mean you pick one and say all Americans are. And that's what you do whenever you're accusing a person. Whenever you tell someone that they, just because they went to a conference and they did this or they did that or they did the other thing, then guess what? They must be this. No, that's like saying all Americans are. Give me a break. There's a wide variety of people. And you know it. You think it. You thought it. You're trying to make it into something it's not. You're using your emotions rather than your intelligence. You're not stupid. Let's be real. If you're a born-again Christian, you have the ability to ask God at any point in time, anywhere you want, any way you want, any fashion that you choose, to get wisdom from Him. Because God said, any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who braideth not, but give to all men liberally. You don't have to be stupid. Being stupid is your own choice. God said He would give you wisdom. He will give you wisdom. When it says upbraid of thought, that means he ain't going to hold back. He'll give you anything you want to know. Anything you need to know. Anything you want to know. Guess what? He doesn't hold it back. He said he'll tell you. Get together with God. Because one of the things that drives me nuts is to see some potential Christian who's out there accusing everyone, uh, you know, wagging the tongue, pointing the finger, you know, and, and being an accuser of the brethren. They're just wagging their tongue at this, wagging their tongue at that. You know what? They could be spreading the gospel if they just quit spreading fire and division and strife and anger and wrath and malice and cesspool water all over the place. Instead of stinking, why don't you put on some perfume and smell good? Why doesn't it be like the prayers that are the incense going up to God, which is a beautiful, savoring flavor in God's nostrils? Why don't you pray for the person that you're accusing and wagging the tongue of? Why don't you just do something positive? about what you're saying to everyone negative about. You're not doing anyone any favors. If anything, you're just splashing around cesspool water. And besides wagging the tongue, what about pointing the finger? <gasps> I saw you. You did that. <gasps> you did that. You did that. You did that. What is it about highlighting someone's failures that makes it so important for you to do? God said, hey, there is no sin nothing hidden that will not be revealed. It's not your choice to reveal it. It's not your ministry. It's not your gift from God. It's the Holy Spirit's. He said He would do it. When He came into the world, He said He was the light of the world and that men love darkness when they love light. Thus that when they come to the light, their deeds would be revealed. So Jesus said when He left that He would send another. And He sent the light of the world, Jesus Himself, by way of His Holy Spirit, giving us that gift that we would be the light of the world. And that just because we're there without saying a word, guess what? Everything's lit up around us. You can see who's a failure, and it starts with you. Look in and see where pointing of the finger is. Just, just look. I mean, please, don't go by my three things that I've said to you. Pointing of the finger, wagging of the tongue, accuser of the brethren. Don't just go by those unholy trinity aspects that are of your nature that you seem to be doing. But rather, go look it up. Stop what you're doing. Stop today. Take a reality check. Take a pill, something. Take a cup of coffee. Get a Bible and start looking. Flip open and look and find or do a Google search, you know, and you'll find it. But do a Google search and say pointing of the finger. Who's pointing the finger? Of course you are. You point at something by way of posting it. You point at something by way of telling someone about it. You point at something by way of commenting on it. What are you doing? What is the volume of your life going to be? Finger pointing? Please. I was raised, you know, that as soon as you pointed your finger at someone, my mother would grab it and break it. <laughs> she was a truck stop waitress. You didn't point the finger. And you know what? Society today has learned something wrong because the Christian hasn't acted what's right. Let's be the light. Quit pointing the finger at things. Quit doing all the negative aspects that everyone is tired of. Oh, they'll go look at it. Yeah, you'll get your little click it, trick it, you know, make a little 10 cent or 0.011 percentage of a click it routine by getting someone to comment on it. But it's disgusting in God's eyes. He hates greatly this whole idea of pointing the finger, wagging the tongue, and accuse of the brethren because it's nothing but evil.
It is evil personified. It is the action of evil being used by you to cause consternation, frustration, aggravation, division, strife, anger, malice, wrath. You're supposed to be sharing the things that bring about the love of God, shed abroad in our hearts that we would be unified in the unity of the brethren, whereby we love one another with a fervent love, that we cared for each other, that we prayed for each other, that we blessed each other. What will you do today? Are you one of those that needs to look up in your daily devotions today? Stop, have a Bible study. Cues are the brethren. First thing to look up. Wagging the tongue. Second thing to look up. Third thing to look up is what? Pointing the finger. Hey, shut up. I mean, please. Avoid the slingers. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. In a dry and weary land where no water is, I have looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Psalm 63, 1, 3. There were people in the Bible called slingers who defeated their enemies by slinging stones and throwing dirt into their wells, contaminating their life source of water. 2 Kings 3.25 We all know people who sling accusation, sling judgment, sling criticism, and sling fault-finding at others. We certainly don't want slingers in our life, and we don't want to become slingers either. Don't be a slinger who contaminates your own faith or the faith of those around you. Spending time with God will fill you with living water. See John 7.38 you will be edified and become a source of encouragement for others all day long. As amazing as it is to me, why people don't choose to listen, I have no idea. I don't. When you read everything that won't make it into heaven, you wonder how will any man ever make it there? Because finger pointing, if you're doing it, you won't make it to heaven. It literally says there, finger pointer people will not be in heaven. It says they'll be outside the city. I think I quit pointing fingers. It says that adulterers would not be in heaven. They're gonna be outside the city, you know, where there's sweeping and gnashing and teeth. I think I quit being an adulterer. It says that those that wag the tongue would not be in heaven because, frankly, God doesn't want to listen to them. It says those that are accuser of the brethren would be cast into the lake of fire. That's serious. So you see, in your devotion time, start recognizing what emotion you have inside or you're causing in others, and you may find the direction of your spirit ought to be the development of what used to be called godly graces in your life rather than downtrodden faces that you're causing other people to experience by your own words wagging of the tongue your own deeds pointing of the finger and your own actions and attitude accuser of the brethren what are you doing God help you if you're doing any of those three stop it Stop what you're doing. Seek the Lord. Even if you know and recognize and after you study it, you found out you've done it, then just say, God, oh man, I don't know how, but it got so easy. And it's easy to do. Don't get me wrong. It's easy to be one of those that, you know, kind of like stick your nose in the air and look down at people and you don't even know your nose is in the air. But everyone else can see it. It's time to clip those nose hairs. I'm sorry. You need to get a grip on your life and look at and see if you are accusing the brethren, if you are wagging the tongue, if you are pointing the finger, because if you are, stop it. Shut up. Listen and go back to God this morning and then do what he says and tells you to do.